In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And your brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us all call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, give her every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. O Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, from the day we heard about you, we did not cease praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding to walk in a manner worthy of our Lord, so as to be fully pleasing, <clears throat> excuse me, in every good work bearing fruit and growing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with every power in accordance with his glorious might for all endurance and patience, with joy giving thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, <clears throat> excuse me, our responsorial psalm is, the Lord has made known his salvation. The Lord has made known his salvation. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has made known his salvation. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has made known his salvation. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song, with trumpets and the sound of horns. Sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. The Lord has made known his salvation. We please stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Come after me, says the Lord, and I will make you fishers of men. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing. But at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell to his knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, O Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of the fish they had made seized him, and all those with him, and likewise James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise <clears throat> you, Lord Jesus Christ. Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing. 
the gospel today does not only talk about <clears throat> you know last weekend i was at at a wedding and um you know usually there's loud music and and so we were talking to each other screaming you know trying to be <laughs> now, now i realize <laughs> i think next time uh, i'm in a big crowd and just again <laughs> We were trying to out loud the, the, the speaker. So the gospel is not only about the miracle, the miracle of the great catch, the number of fish. It tells us about our day-to-day -day struggles in life. You know, there are times when we, we think we have all the good intentions. We do the best we can. We try to be as good as we can. We do good things. We do as, you know, we perform things as they are required. And yet, nothing seems to work or no good thing seems to come out of it. And so sometimes it's very, it's very frustrating. And we want to give up. You, you could just imagine Simon Peter here trying to make a living, raise his family. He says, we have worked hard all night. I mean, these are seasoned fishermen. They know exactly how to fish. They know where to fish. And, you know, even with their best intentions and their best efforts, nothing seemed to work. And here comes Christ saying, I was okay, just right there. Just look. And Peter said, Lord, I am a fisherman. You are a carpenter. If you tell me how to hammer, uh, that I would follow. But you are not a fish. I am a fisherman. I know what I'm doing. To lower your nets somewhere where there are no fish. But Peter said, well, because you say so, I'll do it. And lo and behold, as the gospel today says, a great catch. As I said, it tells us about the things that we do. There's um, a story um, I found in, in online. I'm sure this is just a made-up story. But, you know, it, it, it captures the essence of the struggle of someone who feels you're doing so much good, but nothing seems to work. It's a story about a, a priest who um, seemed to have, you know, been doing so much, but at one day he thought nothing seemed to work until people started telling him, well, actually, Father, you thought it, you know, nothing was working, but actually you did something good. You know, I, I don't want to, you know, present myself as if like, you know, we're doing everything good uh, in this world. but. It's a short story, but let, let me read it to you. The parish priest of a small town arrived at the church to offer an evening mass. But time passed and the town folk did not come. However, after 15 minutes, three children entered. After 20 minutes, another two young people entered. The priest began the mass with five people in attendance. There are more of us here. <laughs> Over the course of the mass, of the mass, a couple came in who sat at the rear bench of the church. A couple came in as the mass was going on. When the priest preached and, the priest and explained the gospel, as he was preaching, there was this um, dirty, unshaven, un unkept um, young man who came into the church with a rope in his hands. Disappointed, and not understanding the cause of the weak involvement of the faithful in his parish, the priest nevertheless celebrated Mass with love and preached with enthusiasm and zeal. He preached as if there were a thousand people. You know, he didn't mind there were just three children and you know, a few others. He preached just the same, you know, with zeal and enthusiasm. On his way home after Mass, he was robbed and beaten by two thieves who took the folder containing his Bible and other valued belongings. Arriving at the rectory and after bandaging his wounds, the priest described his day as the saddest day of my life, a failure in my ministry, and the most unfruitful day of my career. But never mind, I'll do everything with God and for him. Five years later, the priest decided to share this story with the parishioners at church. When he had finished, a couple in the parish stopped him and said, Father, the couple in the story that sat at the back was us. We were on the brink of separation because of several problems and discouragement in our 
at home. That night, we decided to divorce. But first, we agreed to come to church the last time as a couple, and then each one would follow their own path. Meanwhile, we left the thought of divorce aside after listening to your homily that night. As a consequence, today we are here with our family. We are here at home and our family restored. As the couple spoke, one of the most successful entrepreneurs who helped in the livelihood of the church saluted, asking to speak. And father said, <clears throat> Father, I am the person who came in half dirty, holding a rope. I was in the verge of bankruptcy, lost in drugs. My wife and children left our home on account of my behavior. That night, I tried to kill myself, but the rope broke. So I went out to buy another one. On my way, I saw the church open and decided to come in. And even though I was dirty and had got and had the rope in my hands, that night your homily pierced my heart and walked out of the church a changed person. Today, my family came home and I became the most successful businessman in town. The, the last one is interesting. At the gate of the sacristy entrance, the deacon shouted, Father, I was the one of those thieves who stole your belongings. The other one died that same night. While we were doing a second robbery, in his briefcase, there was the Bible, the Bible of the priest that they stole the briefcase. When I would awaken in the morning, I would read it. After all this reading, I decided to apply it and my life and participated in the church. I guess he said, I'm sure this is just a made up story. It's probably not a real story, but it really describes um, our day-to-day -day experience, not just of us priests, that there are times when we question, have I really done something good? Or um, is it really worth it? You know, I'm sure all of you, you know, after doing so many things, not only for the church, but your family, sometimes you say, I don't know what's happening. Like, nothing seems to work. Nothing good with all the good intentions, with all the good things that I do, with all... You know, everything is planned. Um, you know, I do everything as planned, as, uh, as scheduled, but nothing just seems to work. That's what we think, but not God. God has his own wisdom that sometimes we don't understand. Peter in the gospel that he thought nothing seemed to work. It was the terrible, the most terrible day of his life. Working hard all night, suffering the cold of the night probably not catching a single fish another night was wasted another day of suffering and sacrifice was wasted sometimes we look up to heaven and say lord come on like you know um what's happening do something and then we, we come to a point when we look back and say Really, God was there all along. But sometimes we just see and realize it at that very moment when things are happening. We only come to realize when we look back and we just laugh at ourselves and smile at ourselves and say, Lord, sorry, you know, I was looking for you. You were there all along, trying to help me, trying to lift me up. So today, that is the, the grace of the day that we ask. You know, when um, we come to that point in you know life that we start questioning, Lord, where are you? Where's your presence? You know, why are things not happening the way I want them? We simply ask for that humility and grace, as Saint Peter to be said. Well, okay, Lord, if you say so. I know what I'm do what I'm doing, but you are my Lord, you are God. If you say so, I will. And everything happened the way God wants it. And today, same thing. Lord, if you say so. There are many things in life I don't understand, but let your will be done. And I'm sure as we follow the will of the Lord, things will work out. Maybe not the way we want them, but always the way God wants it. And anything that we do that is according to the will of God, that is always pleasing to the eyes of God.
called by Christ to share in his mission before the world, let us all ask for the gifts necessary to be his faithful disciples. We pray for the church. May God grant us disciples the gifts needed to share the gospel message with carries and fervor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for government leaders. May God give them strength in working tirelessly to uphold the dignity and sanctity of human life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all who are sick and in need of God's healing this day, especially those who struggle with mental and emotional pain and suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for those who have died. May the Lord welcome them to his dwelling place where they may offer him continuous praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and today we pray for the deceased members of the Duran family with intentions of Paul Caruso and for Melissa and Juanita Salas from this Mass offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for all, all of us gathered today for ourselves, for those who ask for our prayers, those whom we promise to pray for, pray for the safety and protection of our families and our loved ones. And for all the intentions that we hold dear in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear our prayers and petitions and grant them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Put to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual bread. Let us not pray that by sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands, the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of the Church. May these sacred offerings, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praise is nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jews fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory with me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints that pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At a Savior's command and form the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from heaven table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stirs to serve you, our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. Be God and give him, we humbly pray. Be thou the Prince of the Heavenly Host, for the power of God, and cast him to the earth safely. And all the evil spirits that prowl about the world, seeking the will of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left an enemy. Inspired with confidence, we find to thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee do we come, before thee we sang, sinful and joyful. O Mother, the word in thy name, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy, hear not to them. Amen. Our Lady of Lords, Amen. a beautiful day to everyone.